Hello and welcome to the Superintendent's Perspective. I'm Lisa Ayala with Edinburgh CISD Public Relations, and I'm joined by Dr. Mario Salinas, Superintendent of Schools. And today we're going to discuss, again, breaking the cycle of poverty, and one of the ways that we do that is through our collegiate education right. and our collegiate high school. So, sir, so talk to us a little bit about this foundational principle of ours. It, yes, uh, in, the, in light of the fact that we live in a high poverty area region, not just Edinburgh, the whole re South Texas region, uh, the majority of our of our families uh, uh, live in poverty, mm -hmm. according to the Texas Education Agency. Uh, the majority of the students in Edinburgh, eighty uh, percent, a little bit more, are what the uh, Texas Education Agency uh, describes as as uh, economically disadvantaged, uh, and that's the way it is for most school districts in South Texas. Mm -hmm. And our the um, one of our foundational principles. Uh, of how we do planning in our school district is to interrupt the cycle of poverty. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this is a social phenomena uh, that that says uh, poverty begets poverty. Uh, that means that if if a child is born into poverty, the chances are high that the child the child is going to grow up and as an adult can go back into poverty. So we want to combat that through through high quality educational programs. That is our mission. Mm -hmm. uh, we start with We've talked about in this program many times of a high quality early childhood program, starting with three year olds all day long. Yes. Uh, give them give them a, a one year head start in a high quality environment, not babysitting, actually schooling. That's right. We feel that that is a, a weapon to fight poverty. We talked about um, a school after school program mm -hmm. where we can keep the students engaged. Yes beginning when they're in elementary school, having in a high quality after school programs uh, to give them additional quality experiences, educational, mm -hmm. again, to to solidify their foundation in the area of education so that they can break out of the cycle of poverty. Uh, it is, it is uh, a known, I'm going to say this, a known fact that the best way to break out of of poverty, the cycle of poverty, generational poverty, is through a high quality education. We've been talking the last several weeks of career and mm -hmm. technology programming. Mm -hmm. We're going to open a new facility, a big facility, where we're going to offer high quality career and technology programs, such as plumbing, electricity, barbering, firefighting, coding, construction, uh, construction trades, mm -hmm. welding, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. High quality jobs for those children that want to do that, mm -hmm. again, to fight generational poverty. The other end of the spectrum of an early childhood education, we have this new collegiate high school. Right. Uh, as we speak, we have four comprehensive high schools where we offer uh, pre-AP, pre-advanced placement, and advanced placement classes. These are college-level classes that are taught at the high school. We feel that uh, pre-advanced placement, pre-AP, advanced placement, AP uh, programs in Edinburgh, CISD, are the best in the whole South Texas. Yeah. We graduate more advanced placement scholars than any other school district in the whole valley, yeah. all, no, all of South Texas. Charter schools, private schools, magnet schools, throw them all in there. We have more AP scholars than all of them. So we feel that that, that also uh, helps us in our effort to... to to fight the generational poverty. And then you got the Collegiate High School, mm -hmm. a new venture partnership with the university, we feel is is is, is a real weapon uh, to fight generational poverty. Yeah. Uh, you can describe a little bit sure. of, of what the Collegiate High School is all about. You and I have been at it since oh. this thing was born. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, the mm -hmm. MOU was signed in mm -hmm. March, and then the groundbreaking happened in November. This has been, you know, something that has been so important. It's a, you know, it's going to be an amazing facility, 85,000 square feet, state of the art. There will, there will be four, or several, actually five pathways. There'll be engineering, there'll be medical field, teaching, um, computer, computer science. science, and then also those that are undeclared. Undeclared. So, uh, you know, if you um, haven't decided... Right, and and this is a small mm -hmm. high school number five, right, in Edinburgh CISD, where the university um, uh, professors are going to be teaching our children when they get to eleventh and twelfth grade, right, with the hopes of our students being able to get at least sixty college hours toward a bachelor of science degree. Yeah, 
That's a bachelor's degree, a four-year degree mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in either engineering, any one of the engineering fields. Yes. They just offered by the university, health health professions. There's all kinds of jobs in the health profession, all kinds, not just nursing. Right. Uh, they've got a medical school. Some of our top achieving students from this school, I'm sure, are going to go that route. Mm -hmm. um, uh, computer science and teaching and undeclared. All all these these pathways that are in demand when our children graduate from college, going to have a job, even before they graduate from college. And they are, I mean, that is at the age of 20, potentially. So yeah. very young. And then that, we hope that they go on to... When they graduate from this collegiate mm -hmm. high school, when they're in ninth and 10th grade, uh, they'll be taking classes pre-AP and AP, mostly with uh, Edinburgh CSD teachers. And then when they get to 11th and 12th, they'll be taking classes with professors. So when they graduate, they'll get a high school diploma. Mm -hmm. uh, and they'll get, and they'll have... Uh, at least, at least, probably more, but at least two years of um, uh, college credits, college hours toward a bachelor of science degree, completely free. Completely free, and that completely is free. another thing that is uh, incredible. And this is a historic partnership. We feel that it's a, a game changer for us. Mm -hmm. The percentages when when it comes to the student demographics for this high school, we already have a, a little over two hundred students for the first cohort group. Mm -hmm. The percentages, uh, as far as the demographics, uh, eighty percent of those those students are economically disadvantaged. So, we're very confident that if these two two hundred students hopefully will graduate from this high school and have their two years of of credit toward a bachelor of science degree, we feel that when they get to the university, straight into their field of of study, we feel that uh, the chances of these these students graduate from, from college are high. And I think that's so interesting. It is it is reflective absolutely of our demographics of mm -hmm. the 80%. And I think one of the most important aspects yeah. of that is that it's inclusive. So that means that you don't have to be a specific, you know, student. You, you don't have to be in programs that you don't have to, uh, you know, meet certain criteria. If you want to do the work, this is rigorous work. This is, you know, work that takes dedication and parental support and the students really needing and wanting to do this kind of work. The the one of the parents that I ran into at HEB, one of the mm -hmm. somewhere out there in the community asked me about the school and 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 she told me I'd like for my child to to get into the high school. What are the criteria? Uh, they they right now we're looking for freshmen, right? And and we're taking sophomores as well, mm -hmm. but we're right now we're going to start recruiting. In fact, today we're going to start recruit, recruiting a new cohort group of mm -hmm. freshman students. There's no criteria. Uh, right. If you want to attend this high school, you submit an application and you're in. Yes, and we'll give you an opportunity. To, to show your, that you can do that kind of work. That's right. But we're not going to deny you because when you're in eighth grade, you weren't straight A mm -hmm. students. Or when you were in eighth grade, uh, you got into some discipline problems. You're not going to be denied. Uh, if, if, if you want an opportunity to get into this high school, we'll give it a chance. Yeah. And, and then once you get in there, do, do the grades because it's going to be challenging. It is going to be challenging. And if you right. do the grades, well, you'll stay in. So basically, it's about guidance. We're not going to deny having, anybody. No, it's about just having the, the spirit. Inclusive. Inclusive philosophy. It doesn't matter who your parents are, how much money your parents make, right. what kind of grades you had in junior high. I want to try this experience. We're going to give you a chance. Yes. So that that's uh, in I think it's incomparable anything to anything else that that's out there. So there's nothing like it. No, absolutely not. No magnet schools, charter schools, none of those things. Uh, this is better than anything. Absolutely. The facility they laid the concrete today, foundation concrete foundation. So we're making progress. Wow. We're finalizing the final designs, the colors, and and things of yeah. that nature of the outside, uh, the shell of the school. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're excited. Uh, we're hoping that within a year, spring break of next, one year from now, right. we're close to getting it done. Yeah. And the students are participating in all of that. So they're going to have a real ownership of this school. They're participating in the colors, the mascot, the way the, the branding is going to look. So this is really going mm -hmm. to be very important. Now, next year is going to be a very unique situation because the students that are going into 11th grade will actually be going to UTRGV campus and taking classes there with, with UTRGV professors. At the beginning of the school, next school year, September mm -hmm. 2023. Yes. Uh, the, our our school, our collegiate high school is not going to be ready. Right. 
So we're going to bus our students to the university, you know, to, to take university level classes on campus. Yeah. Uh, so we can be busing students back and forth. Uh, you know how the university, it's not like, it's not like the traditional public schools, eight to five, eight to four thirty. They, they Mondays and Wednesdays, you may take one or two or three classes. Mm -hmm. Do this and Thursdays, you may take two classes. So we busing students back and forth to our campus and to the university uh, until we get our building done. And at uh, which point the professors mm -hmm. will have lecture halls in this facility mm -hmm. and they'll have their own offices. And, and that can be a standalone uh, high school number five uh, with about, we're hoping, 800, 800 students. Right. And located mm -hmm. in prime, prime area, right on the corner of Freddy Gonzalez and the expressway. So it will be a gorgeous, It's going to be a state-of-the-art facility mm -hmm. on Freddy Gonzalez and Highway 281, prime mm -hmm. location. There's not going to be uh, any school out there that offers those same services, magnet schools, charter schools, whatever you want to call it. Right. None of them are going to compete. Right, right. This is definitely something that is unique mm -hmm. and really something that we want to encourage any student that is interested to apply. The application deadline has been extended to April 27th. Mm -hmm. So it's on the website. It's, you know, they can, they can download the application. They can We're going to be re talking to the parents. In mm -hmm. fact, today is our first yes, orientation at Memorial. At Memorial. We're going to talk to the parents and, and encourage those that they want that opportunity, that if they want that opportunity, that uh, it's there for yeah. them, for their taking. And some parents want that kind of environment where at this school, uh, uh, every child on, the, on this campus knows that college is the route they want to go. That's right. They're like-minded kids. They're like-minded. They're all going to go to college. And some parent, and it's a, it, in light of that fact, the, the rigor is higher, yes. you know, and, and some parents want that for their children, you know, and, and, and on top of that, it's a completely free at least two years of, of uh, Division One university level classes, completely free. I mean, some parents want that. Absolutely. I mean, that you know. that kind of that's worth at least twenty thousand dollars in in tuition, easy. easy. And that's not even including books or anything easy. else. Easy and so, all the fees and late fees exactly. and parking fees and all mm -hmm. kinds of parking violations that we all get when we're in college. Right. None of that. Right. You know, uh, so it, it's a great opportunity, and and remember, most of these children are economically disadvantaged. So they probably will. We're going to cycle them out of poverty. That's right. These these kids to get into the school, just another weapon, you know, uh, to combat uh, poverty. Uh, it, that's it, not to say that our comprehensive high schools uh, are are not doing a good job. They are absolutely. Uh, but at the comprehensive high schools, we've got students that are are going to go the career and technology route. Sure, they want to be an electrician. They want to be carpenters. They want to be mechanics. They want to work with air conditioning, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. On, on they want to be on. firefighters. They want to be police officers. That's right. And so there's nothing wrong with that. Those are high-quality jobs. Yeah. Some of them are going to go to college, just like these students at the college and high school. You know, and... and um, uh, and it's an important pathway as well. We have we have pharmacists that went through our CTE program, so mm -hmm. that's still an option. Yeah, that's but an it's option. also an option and a choice for those that don't want to. Mm -hmm. And that's like you said, it's not because they can't handle the the workload or anything. They just have they can do it. different you, you passions. You have children. You mm -hmm. have siblings that yes, college is not the route they want to go. I have siblings that college is not what I want to do. Even though I have the brain to to go there, that's mm -hmm. not what I want to do. I want to be my own boss. I want to. Right. Work with my hands, uh, think like that, you right. know, so. My brother's yeah. a police officer here at the district, that's so that's exactly. That's, the, that's correct. We all have family members that have done that. Mm -hmm. So it's really important. And this is such an important topic. All week long, this week, next week, we will be going to all of the different middle schools to, to for presentations to the parents and students who have questions about uh, the application process. So we want to make sure that they go to Barrientes, and we will have something about Barrientes, Harwell, Brewster, South, Longoria, Bio Garza, and you can put this up Yes. Uh, uh, for orientation. And any parent can go to any one of these, uh, whether you live in McAllen or whether you're not zoned to that particular school or you're not going to that particular school, but that's the only time that you can make it. All parents are invited yes. uh, to these different uh, orientation sessions. If you're interested and you want to learn more about the Collegiate High School, we offer and we we invite you to go to these orientation sessions where you can talk to the principals and uh, other central office administrators 
that are promoting uh, the Collegiate High School's uh, next cohort group. Yes, so that, it's an excellent topic, and we will be continuing to talk about it. And so that's what we'll have, that's that'll be this uh, week's show. And we want to thank you all for joining us, uh, of course. And on this week's Superintendent's Perspective, and as always, stay healthy and stay safe. <laughs>